One of the most important components of a stock valuation is the terminal value calculation. If you don't calculate this value properly, what's going to happen is that the intrinsic value that you get from your valuation is going to be off and this can potentially lead to erroneous investment decisions. But don't worry, in this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through the terminal value formula in Excel. Okay, so in terms of the terminal value formula in Excel, there's three different methods of calculating the terminal value formula or the terminal value that are most typically used in finance. So we have the growth perpetuity method, the no growth perpetuity method, and the exit multiple. Each of this, of course, as you can imagine, has a different formula and it's going to give you at the end of the day a different terminal value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through each of the different methods. And then at the end, what I want to do is share with you this template that automatically calculates the terminal value regardless of whatever method that you want to use. So we're going to start with the no growth perpetuity method. This method is one of the simplest that you can apply. So let me zoom in. The way that it works is very simple. You need to enter a terminal cash flow. So this is the cash flow that you think will go on and the company will generate in perpetuity, which means like basically forever. So if you can picture it, like let's say this was year zero and year zero is basically today, right? And then after that, we have year one. And then after that, we have year two and so on and so forth. This just keeps going. So basically what you're assuming is that this cash flow value will continue to be generated by the company over time for many, many, many different years, basically forever. So that's the assumption of this. This works uh, quite well for companies that are very steady. So like, for example, utility companies that don't have a lot of growth, for example, and are very steady in terms of cash flows. You could use this method and it generally yields pretty good results. So in that case, all you need to do is to project the terminal cash flow that you think the company will generate in perpetuity like we talked about. And then the other metric that you need is the WAC or a discount rate for which you want to take all those different cash flows that we talked about and discount them into the present. That basically means like what is the return that you're looking to get for your investment. So in this case, the WAC is 8.5%. This would be the return that we would be getting on an annual basis by holding the this company, for example, that generates this cash flow. So the terminal value formula for this method is very simple. You enter the inputs and then the output or the formula is very simple. You take the terminal cash flow and you divide it by the WAC, the weighted average cost of capital or the discount rate. And at the end of the day, that's going to give you exactly what the terminal value should be for this particular company. One thing that I want to share, which is quite important, is that the terminal value is not the intrinsic value of a particular company. In fact, there might be some other factors that you take into account, some other cash flows, for example, that may not be regular that you take into account to calculate the intrinsic value of a particular company. So just keep that in mind. The second method to calculate the terminal value of a particular investment or stock or asset is the growth perpetuity method. This is very similar to the no growth growth perpetuity method. The only difference, as you can imagine from the name, is the fact that this has growth built into it. So if you remember, the assumption for the other model is that you would have something like year zero, year one, and then you would just continue in perpetuity forever. And then you would have a particular cash flow. So in this case, let's say that this was the cash flow that you would expect for that particular company forever. So this just keeps going, going, going. The difference now is that instead of this cash flow being steady, what's going to happen is that you would take this and you're going to multiply by one plus the growth rate. So in this case, the growth rate, let's say it's 4%. So over time, if you just keep doing this formula, you can see now this is taking the previous value. Oh, sorry. In this case, what you need to do is lock in the cell. So that way it's picking up the growth rate for every single cell. Once you do that, then apply it to the other ones. And here we go. As you can see, now it's taking the previous value and then multiply it by one, which is basically itself plus the growth rate. So as you can see, very quickly, you see a lot of growth. This would be the kinds of cash flows that you would expect in this case. 
And what you're doing with this method is you're taking the present value of this cash flows and that basically gives you your terminal value. Now, in order to take the present value, again, you use a WAC or a discount rate, which is the basically the return that you would expect on your investment. And altogether, the formula for this, don't worry, is quite simple. So what you would do is enter the inputs, which in this case are the terminal cash flow the WAC and the growth rate. And once you have that, you take the terminal cash flow and you divide it by the WAC minus the growth rate. So this basically assumes that the WAC is going to be greater than the growth rate otherwise or equal, otherwise this model wouldn't work. So for example, one company that you may want to use uh, this type of terminal value calculation is something like Coke. So Coke is a company that has very stable cash flows and they continue to grow at a small but steady pace over time. That could be potentially a good use case of the growth perpetuity method because that exactly models the type of value that you would extract from that type of company. The last method to calculate the terminal value is the exit multiple method. The exit multiple method is very commonly used and is very simple, so it is a great one to learn. So the only two things that you need is a metric multiple and the projected metric. Naturally, the key question here is what are the metric multiples and what are the projected metrics? So projected metrics, there's many different ones that you can use. This could be revenue. The other one is the enterprise value, EBITDA, and you can also pick the free cash flow as well. After that, what you would do is to select a metric multiple. So let's say that you end up picking revenue and this is the projected revenue after a specified period of time. So let's say five years. This is what you expect in terms of revenue. All you need to do in order to calculate the terminal value is to multiply that expected revenue times what you would project that you would be able to sell the company for. So let's say like that the company has always been trading at 2.2 times its revenue. So in that case, you can see that the formula is 2.2 times the projected metric which in this case is revenue and that would give you the terminal value for that particular asset as you can see this is a great method to use for companies that don't have a long history of a clear financial track record so this could be great for high growth stock companies biotechnology companies all that type of stuff which are generally traded in multiples anyways the key thing here is to pick the right metric which you can find just by looking at the industry itself as well as the metric multiple which if you look at historical data this helps quite a bit so I highly recommend that you look into that and I'm gonna give you one way in which you can do any of this terminal value formulas a lot easier okay so just to end one tool that is very helpful to be able to determine the terminal value for any particular stock is to use white sheets so in this case we're gonna look at Apple and if you click on quarterly data What's gonna happen is that you're gonna get the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flow, and the key metrics on a historical basis. So in this case, this is on a quarterly basis. And let's say that we're interested in doing the exit multiple. So in that case, what we're looking for is the price to sales ratio for the company. And as you can see, if I just highlight this uh, column right here, zoom in what's going to happen is that you see the price to sales ratio and what the company has traded at on a quarterly basis in this way you can more accurately pick a number that makes sense in terms of your analysis a lot faster of course from here you can also look at the growth rates you can look at averages over time and all that type of stuff one last thing is that instead of getting all the data at once you can also use the white sheets formula so in this case we're going to use the whites formula and we're gonna let's say that we're gonna apply this method to coke even though it may or may not make sense and let's say that the terminal cash flow that we're looking at is the free cash flow and we're gonna do this for the last year of available data so ly we're gonna enter this and the cool thing about this is that automatically you're going to get the terminal cash flow for this particular company and with the whack that you enter or you can change 
for example, 7.5%, you will be able to calculate the terminal value right away. One last thing that I highly recommend that you do is to apply sensitivity analysis to your terminal value. And the way that you do that is very simple. You pick one of the methods to calculate the terminal value. And in this case, we have this method right here, the one with growth, and this is the terminal value. And the cool thing about this is that using sensitivity tables, which by the way, we have a video dedicated on our channel about this topic, which will live a link in the description. This allows you to see if I have a different whack or a different growth rate, how the terminal value would change based on those values. This is extremely powerful because at the end of the day, to be extremely precise and to pick 10%, it's not as good as being able to see the different ranges of numbers that you think are reasonable and seeing how that affects the particular terminal value. So the ones that have the biggest effect, you have to be the most careful of, and the ones that may or may not have a big effect you don't have to be as precise about now you know everything about the terminal value formula in excel and most importantly how to use this so you can make better stock investment decisions if you've enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications on so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this that's going to allow you to take your investing game to the next level i'll see you in the next one